Welcome to Tough CEO's eWeek event. If panelists can please unmute and put your videos back on, that would be great. My name is Alyssa Milto and uh, I'm going to uh, be moderator today and I'm going to introduce myself and then I'm going to introduce our uh, panelists. And then I'll, we will talk about the challenge, the building challenge. If you want to build with us, but you don't have uh, materials, so this is a great time to run and get them. And these can be cardboard, you could have string, tape, maybe get some scissors, a uh, stapler if you want it. Anything that you have around the house. People like to bring, bring Lego bricks, that's wonderful too. Um, so as I said, my name is Alyssa. I work at the CEO and I am in charge of all our summer programs and all the programs we have for kids at the center. Uh, so we're going to do, be doing one of the activities from that today. Um, but as we're building, we're also going to get a chance to meet with three Tufts engineers, which I'm really excited about. So I'm going to start with the panelists. Um, I am going to start with Lily Geller. Can you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Hi, my name is Lily. I'm a sophomore at Tufts majoring in chemical engineering, and I hope to pursue the environmental sides of that. Um, I really want to work in renewable energy. If anyone's heard of what that is, I'll probably talk a bit more later. Um, when I'm not in class, I really like to hike, play Frisbee, and do work on different art projects. Excellent. Thanks, Lily. Longin, can you go next? Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Longin. I'm a second year studying biochemistry and biotechnology. Um, what I hope to do with biotech and biochem is to probably make something with uh, medicine and engineer like drugs and stuff for um, health benefits. And when I'm not at class, I'm usually playing basketball with my friends or just hanging out. Muted myself. Nicole, can you go next? Uh, hi everyone, uh, my name is Nicole. I am a graduate student at Tufts, so that means I've already been to college and I just loved school so much I wanted to keep going. So I'm still here. I study mechanical engineering and I especially like to look at the ways that people work together when they do engineering um, with everyone from third graders, fourth graders, fifth graders, all the way up to other college students. Um, and outside of school, I like to read, ride my bike, rock climb, and do a little knitting and crochet, which I'll talk more about later. Excellent. All right. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and introduce our challenge, building challenge for today, and you'll get to hear a little bit more from everybody as we build. Um, so today, people are going to be making a chair. So obviously, we're not building life-size chairs, although we could, um, but just we only have about 40 minutes or so, so we're going to make them much smaller. Um, and each of the panelists has a different client who they're thinking about as they build. So we're gonna have um, each of you introduce your, your, your client as you're thinking about your chair because the different clients will make the different, make chairs be a little bit different. We'll have different things to think about as you'll think. Um, so this time we'll start with you, Nicole. Who do you, are you building for? Yes. Um, so this is my client. Her name is Dr. Purple Octopus. I made her myself and I'm really proud of it. Um, and what I want to make for her today is a really comfy chair so that she can um, sit on the couch with me when I'm watching TV at night and we can just hang out and be super comfortable. Excellent. Uh, Lily, who are you building for today? And it's very unfair in a way because Nicole has her uh, octopus prop. But... Well, I have my own friend here. Oh, this is Ella. <laughs> I will be building a chair for Ella. She loves to go to the beach. So I will be especially building a chair for her to use there. And so I'm trying to think about the different things of, oh, might it get wet? What do you want to, how will it be easy to carry on the beach, especially since she is a dog and can't stand up on two legs, so. Perfect, thank you. <laughs> That's my class. All right, and Longin? Um, I'm building for a four-year-old baby, I guess. This is my, my baby. <laughs> um, so I'll be building a chair that has a lot of support for the baby because it's very, fragile and young at the moment. So make sure it's comfy and it's uh, supported. Yeah. Perfect, okay. Um, so I think you probably have already, sounds like thought about some of the design features you need for your chairs to make sure that your client is comfortable and able to sit in them. Um, can, we're just gonna go around quickly and you're gonna share the materials you're using, which might be similar or different from what people have at home. So Nicole, can you start again? Yes. I have um, on my table in front of me some cardboard, cereal box, um, have an egg carton, 
I have a few different kinds of tape because I'm not sure what I'm going to try to use yet. And I have a few straws and some construction paper. Um, that's what I'm going to be working with. Really? Um, I also have cardboard and tape. And I have a plastic bag. Um, I have some Legos too, not a ton, so I'm not sure what I'll do with those yet. And some paper, scissors, these kinds of things. Perfect. Thanks. And Longin, what do you have? Um, I also have some cardboard, a uh, paper cup, uh, some tapes, and a uh, stapler. So um, pretty simple, I guess. Okay. okay. And I think everybody at home will notice that even though you may think of engineers as having really Comp complicated high tech things you can do a lot of engineering with the things you have around the house so everybody has cardboard on this panel there's tape um, there's all sorts of things we use pipe cleaners paper clips um, pretty much anything that you can find to help you make a structure all right so go ahead and start building and as you're building i'm just going to ask some questions so that everybody can see or what you are interested in what, sort of how you got to this place so lily i'll start with you um, and I'm just curious, how, what did you, what happened? What, like, why did you decide to become an engineer? So I think what first, what, how I first heard the word engineer or kind of first um, learned what that was, was in seventh grade, there was a parent who came to talk to our class about being a mechanical engineer. And he had us work on an art project that involved um, gumdrops and toothpicks, trying to build the strongest structure so that we could balance the most water bottles. And my team won, and I thought it was just a really fun activity. And so I'd always loved science and math, but having this person come in and tell me, oh, if you combine them, that's engineering. That was really impactful for oh, me. Oh, that's so. really cool. Yeah, and that was, so that was seventh grade? Mm -hmm. Wow. Before that, had you heard of engineering? I think I definitely had, but um, not as much is in the more direct way of how one would become an engineer. Um, I think my grandfather was an engineer. I'd heard okay. a bit about it, but not a ton yet. Excellent. Longin, how about you? Um, I think this was my freshman year in high school. Um, I always thought like engineering was sort of something uh, that you build, like sort of mechanical. Um, but I was sort of brought into the world of synthetic biology, where we engineer sort of DNA and uh, bacteria, that kind of stuff. Wow. And I thought it was just really cool. Yeah. And are you doing some of that at Tufts? Uh, yeah. Wow. Can you tell us a little bit about a project where you're doing some of that? Um, uh, so like last summer, or yeah, last summer I was working on zebrafish, um, where I was basically editing the DNA of a specific gene so that I can make it glow. Um, so that was pretty cool. Wow, Just that's really cool. Neat, thanks. Nicole, I'm going to ask you about your journey, but can you tell us right now first, why, what are you doing with your stuffed animal? I saw you get the, the octopus and you're doing something. So what, what I was doing was first I put her up here just to kind of see how she likes to sit. And she's a little floppy because she has all these tentacles. So I was trying to think of a way that I could lift up her body and let her tentacles kind of hang down. So I cut out this cup from my egg carton and I was putting her on it to see how tall it was but I'm not super happy with it I don't think it's quite tall enough so okay. I'm gonna think of a new idea um, to try to lift up her body and let her touch it down. all right all right and where, why are you in engineering uh, um this has been a long time a long time for me um when I was in elementary school I used to go to science summer camps because I loved science, but I mostly loved when we got to build things and do experiments. I remember one time at camp, I got to make a hoverboard with a leaf blower. It was so cool. Um, and I was always kind of good at science. And then in middle school, someone said, hey, you should think about engineering. So I started trying to find out more about it. Um, in high school, actually, I was really lucky. My high school had a lot of engineering classes that I could take. Um, so I took three engineering classes in high school, and it was just something that I loved to do, and I was good at it. And so I kept going through college, and I'm still doing it now. Well, you actually led into my next question. Um, how much engineering did you do in high school? So you've answered that, it sounds like. Um, Lily, do you mind going next? The answer might be none. I don't I actually don't know your answers. <laughs> Yeah, my school also had a couple engineering classes. It was my sophomore year and they had, um, they started a new class that was called Women in Engineering, 
which I thought sounded more exciting to me than mechanical engineering, which was a class I did end up taking later. But um, we learned a bit about biomedical, a bit about civil engineering, kinds of all types. And what was really cool was that it was a class with only other women in it. So um, because there's just not as many women in engineering as um, obviously we would all hope. So it was really cool to talk to other people about their experiences. So oh, that's yeah, great. in high school, I had a, couple, a little bit of experience, but out of time. We have, and usually um, in the summer, CEO has a couple workshops just for girls, which I'm sure you found like in your, your class, it's just a little bit different dynamic. All right, Longin, how about you? Um, yeah, so like I was probably, it was like my freshman year, um, so not too long, but, um, I was basically sort of introduced to like, as well as the biomedical stuff and a couple of some other sort of nanotech, um, engineering courses throughout my high school career as well. All right. My next question is, what do you like best about engineering? Maybe there's not more than one thing. Um, Lily, let's start with you this time. Um, I would say what I like best about engineering is that you can really see the impact of the things you're making. If you're just in a science or math class, it's kind of all on the paper, um, all theoretical more, but I've been able to work in some labs on campus. And one of them specifically, it's building meat in the lab, kind of growing cells, making like a hamburger, but without having to hurt any animals or without having to use as much land or water. So it's um, very interesting. I'm able to do things very hands-on and then kind of see the implications or see how that's going to kind of help a lot of people um, just reduce how much they're hurting the environment well. Oh, yeah. That, uh, yeah. Um, I'm going to pause for one second. We had a question that I just want to address that um, should we start working? Yes. If you're at home, you can absolutely be building while um, we're all talking and you can use any materials that you have, have at home. Um, so yeah, sorry. So yeah, that's really interesting. Um, we were saying about not only is it about the problem of the meat, but also how that impacts the rest of the world. I mean, those are huge challenges um, that you're you'd be. Alyssa, I'm so I'm so sorry to interrupt, Alyssa, but um, I think a few new people. Can you read uh, introduce the design challenge and Absolutely. just remind people that we're on the webinar format? Thank you so much. So if you're just joining us, um, what we're doing is. The, the panelists are building chairs. They have each have a different client. Um, you can hold up your clients. Um, we've got Nicole is building for her octopus. Lily is building for her dog who's going to the beach and Longan is building for a baby. And as they're building, they wanna make sure that their, the, their client is able to sit up in the, their chair without falling over and that the chair does not collapse with the weight of their client. Um, I'm gonna answer some in the uh, chat right now. now. My son wonders if you're going to see his no so you we're not going to be able to see what you all at home are building because this is um, a webinar, but we do have a link where you can put what you've built into um, a virtual museum. So not only will you be able to see the what you've built up there, but you'll be able to see what other people have built too. So I think that'll be a nice way to do it and we'll share that link. Um, I think McGee is going to share that at the end. Um, you can probably toss it in the McGee though right now and we can do it. And so also people are sharing um, different things that they're building. So that's exciting. And we do have a question. Nicole, do you work with fourth graders and visit school? Yes, I do. I haven't got a chance to very lately. Um, we are not allowed to go to schools right now, but for the last three years, I've been pretty regularly going to third grade classrooms, fourth grade classrooms, fifth grade classrooms to get to see them do all sorts of engineering. Um, a lot like what we're doing today, using these sorts of materials to solve problems for um, a lot of times what we do is problems for their local communities. So stuff that's going on in their town, um, they get to solve problems for them. Um, and I have a request. If you can tilt your cameras down, at least for part of it, um, so we can see what you're working on, or maybe lift it up every now and then. That would be helpful. Um, and so the other part of that question was, can you visit my school, Nicole, and talk to my class and my friends? Um, I would love to do that, but I don't think it would happen anytime soon. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, this year, we haven't been able to visit with schools, which is really disappointing. That's uh, Everybody here goes into schools and visits. Um, that's one of our favorite parts of the job. Uh, so we're definitely missing that. 
All right. So I think I was going, what do you like best about engineer and engineering? Longan, can you answer next? Yeah. Um, so I really like about engineering because it's so like fluid and multifaceted. Like it's, there's no one simple way to define engineering. And I think that's what makes it so special that everyone can have something they're good at and be able to say that it's engineering um, because it uses sort of some kind of uh, method or, uh, or technique. Yeah. Oh, that's a really great point. I always feel like with engineering, you can have people with different strengths so that not everybody needs to be really good at the same thing. And that's why engineers come together as teams that Longin might be really great um, with one thing, but then Nicole's, you know, she's really strong in something else and I can do something, but when we're all together, we can make something really wonderful. All right, Nicole, you didn't answer this one yet. What you like best about engineering, right? Yeah, that's, I mean, that's connected to right what I was going to say. Some of my favorite things about engineering are thinking about the process. Like there's a special kind of set of ways of thinking and things that engineers do um, that makes you kind of able to think about any problem and, and come up with a solution. And then you get to do that in a team, which is one of my favorite things is to work with other people and bounce our ideas off of each other and use our different skill sets. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> I like the process too. Um, let's take a break right now and just go around and if everybody can show us where you are with your build and maybe while we're talking this about this, you can post your, or tilt your camera down. Longan, do you mind just sharing where you have so far? Yeah, so I have like the name skeleton of it, I suppose. I've got some armrest here as well. Okay. Um, yeah, that's what I have so far. Um, and what are you gonna do next? Uh, I'll probably build like a like a base for the chair so that it has some, okay. some some height because right now it's kind of flat. Yeah. Is there anything you're not sure of, as, like when you're thinking about the design that you think might give you a little trouble? Yeah, I mean, uh, usually there's always some kind of problem with building something. So, like for mine, because it's a baby, I like to think that it's going to be sort of flexible. Um, so I was just thinking how this the back should be like so that it's not always like this uh, or always like this. Um, so yeah, I'll have to tinker with something else as well. Okay, excellent, thanks. Uh, Lily, do you mind going next? Yeah, sure. So my chair, it looks pretty, like it's kind of far away, but that's just because it was I cut up part of a box. So it was almost already in this shape. But now I'm trying to make it foldable so that if someone was going to the beach, they'd be able to carry it on their back. So I've been trying to cut apart parts of the box. I added a hole in the back so that um, Ella's tail can stick out so that she can fit in it more comfortably. And so I think my next part will be trying to build um, different legs for the chairs, but fortunately Ella's a little bit heavy. So I think that's what's gonna give me the most trouble if those legs might collapse in on themselves. Do you have any idea how you're gonna address that? Um, well, I know that a lot of um, triangles are really strong shapes. So I might add triangular supports up at the top of my legs. I don't know if everyone can picture, here's the chair, here would be a leg. If you add some little support right there, that's something that's gonna give it a lot more strength so it'll stay upright. Okay, cool, thanks. And Nicole, let's check in with you. Yeah, I'm, I'm still working on my little cups. So what I did was I took two of the egg carton cups and I stacked them on top of each other because when I did my first test, I noticed it wasn't really tall enough. So I made it taller, but then it was kind of, it wouldn't stay up. So I added some cardboard on the inside and I actually put some stuff in between the two cups. Oh. Uh, now I'm noticing that when I try it out again, it's still a little floppy. Um, so I want to add something that can hold up her legs and give it just a lot more structure. Cause okay. it's kind of like a stool right now. And are you going to have a back on that? Or like, I'm wondering, are you letting her all her legs, like you have the chair like this, are her legs going to be around it or some of her leg, like the legs all going to be pushed toward the front? I think I'm going to put them all around. I'm just trying to imagine what it would be like to be an octopus. It's kind of tricky. I don't know if they lean back. I think they might want to have their legs all around them in a circle. Um, so I think I'm going to go with that. And it's kind of an interesting chair. It probably wouldn't be good for a human, but it might be well, good but for You're not designing it for a human. That's completely fine. <laughs> um, yeah, like when engineers design, they they definitely, they talk to lots of people, they do all sorts of testing before they even start building things. Um, so everybody here, they, they knew who their client was gonna be, so they'd already started thinking about their chair even before we started designing today. 
Okay, next question. Um, I think some of you have already answered this. So my next question was, what kind of engineer do you want to be and why? Um, if you, I think Longin gave the biggest definition, the biggest description of this. So is there anything you want to add to what you had already said, Longin? Um, I guess just the fact that um, there's, there's a lot of side to engineering and with my particular field, like sort of the biomedical, the biochemical field, I guess uh, the biggest thing would be to try to make something that would help people in society, whether that's like medicine um, or something else like that. Yeah. All right, cool. Thanks. How about you, Nicole? It's such a big question. Um, so I don't know if I honestly see myself being an engineer, doing engineering professionally. I really, really like doing um, the teaching of engineering. Uh, so I, I'm excited about teaching um, elementary school kids. I'm excited about teaching high school kids or college kids. Um, I have a lot of different things that I want to try, but I definitely, my favorite thing is teaching engineering. Okay. And do you think you'll be able to use a lot of what you've learned about engineering in your field of engineering? Yes, absolutely. I think it's so, so helpful to have, I have done a lot of engineering in school and I get to use that in when I'm trying to teach and I have all this experience that I can draw on and I still get to be part of those projects that, that students are doing. Great, thanks. Um, Lily, I have the same question for you. Before that, would you mind holding up your dog? We've had a request from one of the participants to see your dog. All right, so. Yes, this is Ella, my, my friend. Do you have golden a real retriever. golden retriever? I don't, but I really like them. I would like to have my own golden retriever. <laughs> All right, how about you for that question? Um, so the kind of engineer I want to be is one who helps the environment because um, a lot of people who are chemical engineers, so chemicals are involved in gasoline, chemicals are involved in like toothpaste and different kinds of things, but sometimes those end up in the garbage and those aren't good for the environment. They lead to a lot of pollution. So I want to do stuff that opposes that. And um, I am really interested in designing batteries. That would be something that would help store the energy from like solar panels or wind turbines, if you guys have seen those before. And that would store the energy so you can use it later when it's maybe not as windy or not as sunny. So that's gonna really help people and help the environment. Oh, wonderful. That makes me really happy. Do you have any <laughs> ideas for, you said the toothpaste tubes, do you have any ideas of like how to, what to, you could do for that? Um, I don't know. I think um, there's just different materials that would be more biodegradable. That's something that would definitely make those better for the environment um, over time. If you put them maybe in the compost, like a lot of um, different plastics are nowadays made out of maybe algae or they're made out of um, different kinds of plants, but if you like grind them up really small, you're able to make those into a tube kind of shape, but then that's not going to live in the landfill for years and years and years. Mm -hmm. It's maybe going to be able to break down if different bacteria or things um, kind of eat it up so that it uh, doesn't hurt the planet as much. Great. Sort of completely tangential, but I was thinking <laughs> the, the um, flaw, tooth floss, like the dental floss, you know, the plastic mm -hmm. container they come in. And Nicole, on, Nicole is sharing her chair. <laughs> I didn't want to interrupt. I was just really proud. Um, I added a little circle on top of my egg cups and now it's oh, and it can support all of her tentacles so they're not just hanging down. Oh, that makes, that's really a good idea. <laughs> well, on the toothpaste thought. <laughs> well, the well, so I didn't want to keep contributing to all the, the waste with the plastic dental floss container. And I found one that it's a glass container and you just buy a refill for the dental floss. So I thought that was like such a wonderful way to think about it that some engineer, they were probably like, you know, that was a problem some engineer had. And they're like, what can we do? And we thought about, they, they thought about the material. They wanted something that was glass so it wouldn't be more plastic in the landfill. Um, and it could, you know, just a little screw off top so you could reuse it. So yeah, so engineers do some pretty amazing things. Yeah, definitely. All right, um, sorry. Uh, oh, here's a good one. I, we've really touched on this. What are ways that you think engineers help people? Um, Longin, do you mind going first? I definitely, you named some of those just with um, bi the biomedical part. Yeah, um, 
I mean, some of the most basic ones are like just uh, making things like easier for people, whether that's sort of like, uh, you know, programs or machines that help people do things for them, or in terms of sort of the biomedical stuff, like drugs uh, that have sort of these different capabilities, whether that's like antifungal or something, mm -hmm. or something that cures cancer or something like that. So it all comes in all forms. Wow, cool. All right, Nicole, how about you? So something that I think about when I think about the ways that engineers help people is the fact that so many things in our world uh, have engineers on the team, even like giant things like bridges and highways and cities and energy, like um, how we get our power to our houses, all the way down to just like little stuff that's on our desk. So just thinking about the, the types of engineers, if, if all people can be engineers, then all people can have a say in how the world gets built around us. Um, and I think that's a really exciting opportunity for, for engineers. Oh, that's awesome. All right, Lily. Yeah, I think very similar to um, just the environmental things I was talking about before of um, engineers designing different ways to hold things um, like the glass containers so that there isn't as much um, trash in the environment. And that's something that really helps people because if there's too much trash, it might make our water a little bit dirty and that's not safe to drink and too much pollution in the air if you're not using like more renewable sources like solar panels and those kinds of things. That leads to um, a lot of pollution that makes it the air not clean for us to breathe. So engineers are really helping to try to work on those problems so that um, people won't have to um, go to the doctors and try as many medicines that Logan would be developing. Thanks. All right, let's take a building, not a building break, but a talking break. Um, and look at what where people are. Longan, how are, how is your chair coming for your baby? Um, I guess pretty good. Um, I've added a, a neck rest for the baby, um, and a sort of a back support. Okay. The chair is more flexible, um, and a, a sort of a a, a base, which um, I don't know if it really works, but um, it acts to give it a little height. So, oh, okay. So like a bounce yeah. sort of? Yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. Um, I have a question. If there's the baby, how are you going to keep your baby from flopping out of the chair? Uh, that's a very good question. Uh, I, I guess um, because of the weight of the baby, it'll try to be, it'll be held down. Um, so it won't go too far off. And it also has some spring to it, so it doesn't sort of toss the baby off as well, I think. Okay. Yeah. Great. Um, Nicole, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Uh, I recently showed everyone this latest advancement. As you can see, she's sitting, sitting up high and pretty. Um, and I just cut out this sort of circle thing uh, I started as a square and then I rounded it a little bit so that this can, the cup can sit on that. So this will be where all her tentacles can rest. Uh, and now I'm going to work on attaching my cup to this piece. And then I think I'm going to lift this up because right, oh, not attached yet. Because <laughs> right now I think it would just be sitting flat on the floor. So I want to lift this whole thing up a little bit. Okay, excellent. And Lily. So right now I'm working on the legs of my chair. This is gonna be the basic format of them and then it will attach on the top to the chair. So then if the chair folds, you could use these as, maybe as straps, um, Wait, which potentially would be fitting around, but so we might need to. Is... Sorry, can you show me where so, it goes? Yes. In your... Here's the vision. Um, these would be kind of legs for the bottom of the chair like this, but the bottom can flip around and it becomes a backpack. Oh, looks so clever. Oh Which my would gosh. hopefully be wearable. <laughs> that is very cool. Um, so so I'm gonna, I, I, somebody from the audience gave a suggestion. So I'm going to share that because that's what engineers do. They design and then they go to their team and they say, hey, what do you think about this? Um, and they give each other suggestions. So we have somebody who says you should add some straps. I don't remember if you said that when you were mm. talking about what you were going to do. I just want to share uh, the idea from the audience. 
Um, all right. And so is anybody, does anybody have a problem yet? Anything they want to ask the other uh, participants and other the uh, panelists about with your design? You can do any, we can do any question, but at that moment I meant like, is there anything with your, what you're building that you're like, hey, can I have another set of eyes on this? I would welcome some ideas about how to lift this up. Um, I don't know if I want to put the legs or put like, maybe I can put a circle. I, what do you guys think? I have a question. Is the octopus going to be using this underwater? Um, I was thinking she'd be using it in our living room. Okay. Um, so I wasn't planning on it. That would be interesting to think about. Um, so one question is, how do you keep it, stop it from tumbling side to side? So somebody from the audience is asking you to think about that. Um, but the reason I asked about the water is if you were going to have it underwater, I would say put something weighted down there. Yeah, that's a good point. I would definitely want to keep it down. Oh. It is a little wobbly. I don't know who said that, but I think you're onto something. I have somebody up. Oh. <laughs> somebody else in the audience's audience says, I think Nicole should add three legs so it's not wobbly. Three legs. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. Thank you. Absolutely. Anybody else have a uh, anything they would like some feedback on? And if, I guess I'm wondering, do people think that it would be better to put the straps on the bottom as part of legs, like I was thinking before, or would it be better to put straps on the back of it and not have it maybe fold as much, maybe on the side, maybe it could be worn like upside down. I don't know if anyone has other ideas. Thoughts? You had it like folding, right? And then you were going to put the folded part on the back? Oh, you're muted, Lily. Sorry. Yeah, so I was thinking with the folding part, there's been issues of it's not as strong when it's not all connected to the different parts of the chair. So if anyone else has ideas about that also. Um, yeah, so that's why I was kind of iterating and changing a person's idea about just making straps might be a little bit more effective. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's a good idea. All right, Long, get anything you want to share or do you want to wait till later? Um, yeah, so I made a sort of strap. I don't know if this would be a good strap, but I suppose it hopefully it doesn't choke the baby, but. Um, Where else could you put it? Is there a place you could put it so it wasn't around the baby's neck? Maybe around the waist. Yeah, I think real babies like either here, like under their shoulders or around their waist. Mm. Um, and Nicole, we have a suggestion for you. You could use tubes to hold all the tentacles of your octopus. Uh, that's a cool idea. I do have some straws. I wonder if I can use those to help hold, hold the tentacles. Cool. All right. We have a oh, I wish we were, we could actually talk to everybody because uh, we have a lot of questions. Nicole, put a cone shape upside down for the middle part of your chair and attach with the part you made. And then we have lots of people who are wondering how you keep things stable. Would anybody like to, I don't think, can anybody answer that instead of going into each of them? How can you do that? So if you have like a stool or a chair, how do you make sure that once you put weight on there, it doesn't tip over? Maybe not necessarily with yours, but just in general, what are ways we can think of for a stool? I think Lily said earlier that triangles are a strong shape that when you can get support kind of you know in three different directions and someone even just had the great suggestion to do three legs on the chair so i think that having lots of sort of points of support especially in like a triangle shape could be helpful yeah and i somebody else from the audience just said weights at the base so if you make it the base either wider or and or have more weight down there that it will be a little more sturdy so it won't tip over as easily. All right. Um, so this is sort of linked to what we're doing right now. What do you do when you're having trouble solving an engineering problem? Like you're really, everybody's been in that thing. You're building something and you just get really, really frustrated. 
since you all are in engineering school, do you mind sharing what you do? Because I'm sure that happens frequently. Nicole, is that a, sorry. Oh, I thought that was, that was a hand. <laughs> oh, no, I, I was just fixing my hair. I feel like um, I've talked a lot. Any other hands? Lily? Yeah, um, I would say when I'm having trouble, because engineering is so collaborative, it's great to ask other people for their opinions, like we're doing here, asking everyone in the chat for help when we're having trouble. So I think that everyone, like people all really want to help each other is what I found in engineering, especially. And I think of any kind of um, different like college career path. But yeah, definitely asking other people, getting another opinion on things. And then even coming up with a different opinion yourself and trying like a completely different idea and seeing if you can maybe combine them. Thanks. Longan, do you have any suggestions? Yeah, I mean, um, like a lot of people think that engineers are like superhuman and they, they have solutions for everything. But uh, sometimes we just don't. And I think it's a great time if you just step back and sort of think about it uh, from another perspective or just clear your head. And then after you come back, you might have found your solution. Somebody actually in the chat just added that. I just move on and then try a bit more. So I assume they mean like try a little bit later. Um, yeah, I think that's a great one. Even if it's not engineering to just like back off for a little bit and then come back. And then somebody else said brainstorming. So maybe it's that you don't, the idea that you had isn't quite right. So you need to brainstorm some other ideas. Great. And I think Long, and you touched on something um, sort of what I think maybe actually you and Lily did. Um, People, I think a lot of people think you need to be wonderful in math and science in order to be an engineer. Um, so what do you think about that? What do you think is most important if you're an engineer? Or maybe not most, but like some of the top things of being important. Um, well, I think though math and science might be helpful if you um, are really interested in and you think you're good in it, um, I think the biggest thing is probably just how much you enjoy doing what you want to do, because if you don't have that passion, I feel like uh, it would be really hard down the road if you're just sort of forcing yourself to do it. Um, yeah, that's a great point. Lily, how about you? Yeah, I would say that um, creativity is really important so that you can come up with the solutions that no one else can see. So it might not just necessarily be like that you know how to build that complicated thing that you're thinking of right away. But the fact that you have that idea, you can talk to other people. And that's like the real starting point that um, will put you on a good path to coming up with some really exciting things. Great, thanks. Nicole, you have anything to add? Yeah, um, I'll just say I am not too wonderful at math, but I have made it this far. Um, and that is a lot of because I know what I don't know and I know when to ask for some help and ask a teammate or a teacher or someone who might know something that I don't. And that's a huge part of engineering is just figuring out what you need help on and getting it. Oh, great. Thank you all. These are great points. Um, let's do another design share. And I'll start with you, Lily, because we had a suggestion. What if you had the dog strapped on the inside and use it as a backpack so that it's portable? And with that, do you mm -hmm. mind showing us where your design is right now? Yeah, well, so that's a good suggestion. I don't know if that person wants to elaborate. Do you mean inside like this is a backpack, like strapped on the inside? But um, so I added legs. If, if that gets typed up, I will read it to you. OK, great, thanks. So I have added legs. I've not yet tested them. I haven't added any kinds of the supports I was talking about. So we're going to see if that works. I'll angle my camera down a bit so that everyone can see. Here's the chair. Oops. And speed the tail through. I love that you're thinking about the tail because that will make it more comfortable for the dog. Mm, okay, so see, I'm having that same problem that a lot of people in the chat were having about, oops, we can't really see the legs that well. But see, they kind of, they bent a little bit. They're not lined up as much. So I think if I add supports right here and right here, that's going to prevent these legs from moving as much side to side, so which will make it a lot stronger. In? Is that what you mean? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's what Very I'm thinking cool. right now. All right. I'll look, I'll, if anybody has any questions for Lily, you can go ahead and put them in the chat. Um, and we'll come back with the questions, but Langan, can you show us what you have? Yeah, so I added the strap. Um, so now it's a lot safer. It's, it's a thick one as well. Uh, so it won't break. 
And I think I'm pretty much finished with the design now. Okay. Um, now it's just the uh, testing it. Uh, Is it possible? Yeah. I don't know if you can move your camera so we can see it on the um, on your table. Oh, Longin, we have a suggestion for you though. Someone thinks you should do something to keep the baby warm while in the chair. Okay, I'll think about that. Uh... Somebody said, I finished my chair, so now what do I do? If you are finished with your chair, you can test it out. As you see, everybody here um, is taking their, their client, the person they're building for, and they're putting it in the chair to make sure that it works, so you can test it out. If you've done that and it can sit in your chair and does not fall apart, you can add another feature onto your chair. Sometimes people add like a drink holder or a footrest or something like that. Um, so you should do that. And another person along in says you could make a tray so that your baby can eat while in the chair. So just like these suggestions are coming in for long and if you feel like you're done at home, you can add on some other feature. Uh, Lily for you, so that the dog is sitting on the inside. Oh, I think this is follow up. So the dog is sitting on the inside to make sure it doesn't bounce out. That was additional from what that suggestion. That's also a good idea. Yeah, I think I could add a nice strap over here and then it would be a lot more secure. Um, and Nicole, can we see where you are with your design? I'm struggling right now to make this too. Um, so I tried out some different ideas that, that people suggested to lift up the, my chair. Let me show you what I tried. So I cut some straws into legs and I thought about putting them straight up and down like you might see on a chair, like a dinner chair. Um, but this is way too big and wobbly for something like that. So if I thought about using two straws to make a V, kind of like a triangle shape, and putting them together like that. But I still think it's too wobbly. I think I need something wide and solid. Like we talked about one way to make something stable is to make a wide base. So I started making this tube that I'm gonna put under here like this. I think it's too tall. <laughs> um, so I'm trying to think about finishing this tube and then figuring out how to tape it to the bottom of my chair. A suggestion for you, Nicole, you can make a platform with a series of egg carton pieces. With a series of what pieces? Egg carton. Like, I think they mean to like take the individual. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> awesome. Remembered you had that and the suggestion on how to do it. Um, we thank also you. had some. What? I was saying thank you. I, okay. I might try that out. <laughs> so, somebody asked if any of you drew this or if you jumped in and started building. So I think I will let them in on a secret that you've built a chair before. So um, in the, an activity like this. So I, my guess is you probably did a little more drawing and planning the first time. Um, but I, none of you actually drew this out, correct? And I'd like to give a follow up on my chair. Um, I have added the support. <laughs> Sorry, that was a loud noise. See down there, um, you can see that there's triangles. Um, this one's a little bit hidden, but here there's a triangle right there. And now my chair is strong enough to hold the weight of wow. my friend Ella. And Ella looks like uh, she's a little heavy too. I mean, not. Yeah, it's quite heavy. <laughs> yeah, that's really great. Good job. Thank you. Um, I'm just looking in the chat to see if anybody else has their nope. Um, which I think that took care of the drawing. Does anybody want to talk about if you are doing um, a more involved project, like for a class or something? What does your planning look like? especially if it's something you haven't done before. Nicole, do you wanna go first this time? Sure. Um, so planning, it can look a, a few different ways. It definitely depends on what I'm trying to do. Uh, if it's something really new, I might start by doing some research and just doing some Google searches, trying to see what, what ideas are already out there. Um, if it's something that I feel like I kind of know what's going on. I might try um, sketching some ideas or making a big list of different ideas or talking with my teammates about what we might want to do. But there's definitely some research. There's definitely some sketching and definitely talking and talking about ideas. Great. Thanks. Longin, how about you? Yeah, I think like sort of the planning, uh, the researching part is also very important to sort of 
get an idea of what you want to do, but at the same time, sort of maybe what materials you need um, and what else you need for that kind of stuff. Yeah. I think this is also a little bit easier because, I mean, obviously, because you're building this chair um, and not like, you know, a real chair even, but I told you all like get materials like this. So you, a lot of time, most of the times, if you're designing something, you also have to think about all the different materials that exist and which ones make sense for your design. In this case, I said, this is what you have to work with because I wanted to make sure they had similar things to everybody at home. Um, all right, Lily, if you can answer that. And also Lily, can you put crossbars between the legs to add stability is a suggestion. Um, anyway, so if you can answer that question though. Yeah, so I would say I definitely do similar things. Um, researching, researching online, and then it's different when you're kind of doing um, a more sciencey type of engineering, like chemical engineering that involves a lot of experiments in the lab also. So that form of researching is trying different like ratios of using one chemical to another chemical and those kinds of things that you do as little stepping stones to build up to that um, larger product that maybe you didn't know how to make initially and then you're doing little experiments um, in addition to the research you found online of what people have done before. I think the little experiments is really important that like you don't build it and then wait till the end to see if mm -hmm. it works, you do it along the way because some there's going to always be something that doesn't work. Yeah, um, definitely. So here's an engineering type question. How is it going to hold the weight? And I think this could go for any of you. If the thing that you're putting on it is heavier than what you're building. And who would like to answer that? You can just wave your hand around. Nicole, you unmuted, so go ahead. I'll answer. So I was just kind of lifting up my cardboard to see how heavy it was. And then I was lifting Dr. Purple up. And she's pretty light, but I don't think she's as light as the cardboard. Um, but it can hold her up pretty easily. So there's a lot going on in like the different shapes that I made that let it support all of her weight. Very nice. And I think the shapes is really important. Um, you know, we saw that with Lily, Lily's design. Like if you think about a folding chair for outside or one of the, like a plastic chair that you sit in, most of the time the person sitting on it is heavier than the chair like those light ones. So it's all about that you have the right materials. Do you have them fit? Like, are they put in the right air, not area? Um, is the configuration, is the way they are put together and the shapes they make gonna help make it sturdier and stronger? All right, so now we're getting close to the end of time. Um, let's hear a little bit more about what you all like to do when you're not engineering, of course. We know you all love school and you really are, you know, you're excited by engineering, but you can't just do that. So what are different things that engineers like to do? Uh, Lily, do you want to start this time? Yeah, sure. Um, so in my free time, I am on the Frisbee team at Tufts. So I definitely like to go outside, um, play around um, with other people. I like to go on hikes. I went skiing with my friends this past weekend. Definitely like to do a lot of art projects, which are kind of um, what I did in high school before I really did a lot more like engineering type activities. So I really like to embroider. My friends and I have been working on paint by numbers. So that's another fun thing that just takes a lot of concentration, will help you get prepared for the patience required for different designs that take a long time. That's what you have a lot of different interests. <laughs> Longan, how about you? What do you like to do when you're not in engineering class or doing activities for engineering? So, um, so I used to a Boy Scout and I like the outdoors. So at Tufts, I joined the Tufts Mountain Club. And before then we would usually go to, you know, Vermont or somewhere close and camp out. Um, that's one thing I do. And then another thing I do, as I mentioned, is uh, play basketball. So I just go to go down to the gym and find people there. And then we just uh, start playing and meet new people. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks. How about you, Nicole? Um, I like to, well, the first thing is I made Dr. Purple Octopus. I knit her head <laughs> and I crocheted her tentacles. Um, so I've been getting into yarn crafts lately. Um, I've always, always loved to read and ride my bike when it's warm. Um, and I've done rock climbing. I've done martial arts. I've done all kinds of, like, I like being active and moving my body in individual sports. <laughs> Great. Um, so I have a question that, um, and then Nicole, you're not living on campus right now, but one of the questions, well, combined, what is it like living at Tufts and going to school at Tufts? 
Uh, Lily, do you want to start this? Yeah, I would say it's a lot of fun living at Tufts. It's definitely different with COVID and everything. But yeah, I'm in my dorm room right now. Um, it's great to live with a lot of people. And being at Tufts um, as an engineer, especially, there's so many ways to get involved with research. And the professors are really understanding and they're really nice. And all the people here are really nice. So it's just a great um, experience to be around so many people who are also excited about the things that they're working on, the things they're learning. And it's like very inspiring and makes you want to do those kinds of things as well. Um, and it sounds like, I mean, for all of you, and it sounds like you you do the academics, but you, there's so much more that you're doing while you're there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Longan, do you want to share, if you don't mind, just a little bit? Yeah, um, I'm currently not in Boston right now, um, but when I was living here last year as my freshman year, uh, you know, living in the dorm is like the perfect experience to start college because you get to live with your friends and it's so close to everything. You just walk there, walk to class, walk to the dining hall. So it's it's super convenient. Excellent. Thanks. Uh, Nicole, anything you have to add? And I have a couple. We only have a few more minutes, but I have a couple more questions, too. Um, yeah, I won't add too much. Um, I went to college in Colorado, which was super fun. And now I live really close to Tufts, but I don't live on campus. But kind of what, what Longham was just saying, I love being able to, to walk and bike everywhere, like being close to uh, all the people I need to see and all the places I need to go. This is a really special part of being on campus. Excellent. Thanks. Uh, another question. What did you do in high school to prepare for engineering college? Uh, let me see. Longan, do you want to share shared a little bit of that? Um, so for my part, I was, we were um, spending a lot of time in the lab um, designing constructs or reading papers. Um, a lot of it was just sort of studying the things that I didn't know before, but yeah, sort of basically getting to know what engineering is um, outside as well. Great, thanks. Lily? Um, preparing for college for me was just paying a lot of attention in the classes that I was taking at the time um, in high school and talking to people who are in college so you can find out kind of what that experience will be like. And um, definitely... I don't know, being prepared for independence and um, meal plan life. I don't know, it's, it's all definitely an adjustment, but it's really hard to prepare because it's hard to know what it's like until you're really there. That's a good point, thanks. And how about you, Nicole? Yeah, we talked about a little bit earlier the kind of the classes that, that we had to, for engineering. So I got to take um, a few different engineering design classes. I took a drafting class, which is um, making engineering drawings. And we did that on paper and in computers, which was really cool. Um, definitely a skill that I used in college. Um, and I also went to summer camps. I went to engineering summer camp in, in middle school and in high school. Um, and that was a really fun way to, that was actually on a college campus. So I got to go figure out what it's like to be around um, a college and explore all the different types of engineering because there are so many different kinds. Oh, that's, yeah, that's a really good point. So I'll go over some of the questions here. Um, engineering camps are really great. Uh, Tufts has them. Uh, I think somebody put the link uh, for our workshops, but if you're not in the Boston area, there, I think a lot of universities have some sort of engineering type camp. And if it's not with a university, there are other places, museums of science and things like that. So I would definitely check that out if you're interested. Um, CEO means Center for Engineering Education and Outreach. It's part of Tufts University, but we're um, a center within the university and we do engineering education. Um, how often do you guys have these activities? I'm, whoever said that they like doing this today, I'm really glad. We really want everybody to enjoy themselves. Um, that makes me very happy. Um, we have not done anything like this before, but we have a lot of people on this call. So maybe this is something we will think about again um, to come up with another activity and you know, give you the materials list ahead of time. And maybe next time have like, oh, I will, Nicole's putting a little hat on this rock, Dr. Octopus. Um, and we'll think about that a little bit more. We are going to offer summer camps. Um, we hopefully that we'll have that list out in the next few weeks. Thank you for people who are saying we did a good job. Really, really appreciate this because we, as I just said, have never done anything like this before. Um, so we did not know how it was going to go, but I was really, I love seeing everybody's questions and comments and things. And even though we weren't uh, able to really talk, I really appreciate people giving suggestions and asking questions. And that's definitely what engineers do. So it's not just about building and solving the problems, which is really fun, but it's about talking to people and, and having a community. Um, 
and solving those problems becomes really fun because you're doing it with people. And it's not very fun right now because it's COVID and we can't actually be with people, but you know, we're still doing it and we're still having a lot of fun doing it. And when you can do that in person, it's even better. So I think we are at time. I wanna thank all of you for joining us. I wanna thank our, uh, the, our participants, not our participants, our, um, what are you? You are a, your panelists, thank you. Our panelists, because um, you all did a wonderful job and I think it was really great. Um, I, we have people who are saying their kids are engaged building right now. Uh, somebody made chair for a slime. So it looks like people have some really great ideas. Um, we will be, you can go onto the center's website. I think we'll wait another minute. So those, oh, McGee put them. If you look in the chat, there's a link to where you can look. Um, so thank you. I think we're running out of time. It looks like for somebody just said on the time for the webinar. Um, we don't want to have it automatically shut down. I'm not quite sure. But thank you so much. And um, we hope to see you again. <laughs>